Daniel, I want you to put your finger on verse 15. Josh, put yours on uh, verse 21. Zane, you want to help me? Put yours on verse 31. Put your finger on verse 31 and 107. We're going to read about uh, eight verses here this morning. Stand with us if you would. <clears throat> Psalms 107, verse 1. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, Amen. whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in solitary way, in a solitary way, and they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses, and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Fred, will you read verse 8? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness Amen. and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Daniel, verse 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Josh, verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. Zane, verse 31. How about we read verse 8 together? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. You can be seated this morning. Uh, I thought this morning, uh, uh, you know what the Lord wants from us? He wants praise. Uh, he wants us to uplift His name. Uh, and I thought in the Bible, uh, anytime you see the same verse uh, four times, uh, that's a point of emphasis of what the Lord wants from us. Uh, he said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. Why praise Him? Because He's good to us when we aren't. Because He was merciful with us when we weren't. Because of His grace, when we didn't deserve it, we owe Him our praise. I thought this morning, uh, it all starts with praise. The title of the message this morning, it all starts with praise. If we can't praise the Lord for salvation, if we can't praise the Lord for the things He's done in our lives, uh, hey, we're missing out on that, or what the Lord is truly looking for uh, in our lives. He wants us to uplift His name uh, and to thank Him uh, for the things that He's done, for the blessings of life, uh, for the helps that He gives. Uh, he wants us to praise Him. Amen. I thought this morning the word praise means this, to express warm approval or admiration of to express warm approval or admiration of. I sure do admire the Lord, but why do we admire Him? Why do we love Him? The Bible says that we love the Lord because He first loved us. That when we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. When we were unlovable, He loved us. When we were unworthy, He went. He, he saved us. When we were unsavable, He helped us. When we were unhelpable, Amen. We owe him praise because of who he Amen. is. Amen. But if we look in, in all of all of Psalms 20, uh, 107, and if you have the opportunity or take the opportunity today, read that whole chapter. It's broken down into four parts. And in the first part here we find in 107, it's just kind of the beginning of why we need to praise Him. And we need to praise Him uh, because of salvation, because of what He's done for us. Uh, it said uh, that they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way uh, and found no city to dwell in. I look at that uh, as those that are lost in their life uh, wander about uh, looking for hope, uh, searching for peace, uh, searching for joy. 
Hallelujah. Trying to find in their lives what they need. And you'll never find satisfaction for your soul until you find Jesus. You'll never find the hope you long for, the peace you long for, the joy you long for until you find the Lord. And once you have come to know Jesus, He'll give you that dwelling place. Psalms 23 says it like this. When He says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the rest of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You say, Before I met the Lord, I had no place. I was miserable. I was lost, and I was lonely. But now, since I was saved, I've got a place to come, a place of refuge, a place of strength, a place where I can come and get what I long for and what I need. We didn't have that when we were lost. Yeah. Said so they were hungry and thirsty. He told him in, uh, he told uh, uh, the woman at the well in John chapter 4, uh, he said, I'll put a, a well of a water of living water uh, inside of you springing forth uh, into everlasting life. Uh, he told him uh, somewhere else in John, he said, I am the bread of life, I believe. Maybe that's in John chapter 6. Uh, he said, I am the bread of life. Uh, whosoever uh, uh, shall never hunger again, uh, eat of his word, uh, of his bread. Uh, hey, I'm telling you today, uh, if you don't know the Lord, you're missing out. Amen. You can't praise Him until you know Him. True. But we want, we want to give the Lord perfect praise. But you know this morning, we're not equipped to do that. He told Him in Matthew 21. I'm going somewhere. He's coming in and, and we know they, 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 uh, they got the colt. They put Him on the colt. They praised Him into the city uh, and He went directly to the house of God. As he's coming into the town, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The only time we find that Jesus allows men to audibly praise him. And the Pharisees looked at him and said, tell your disciples to, to, to quit, to quit praising you. He said, if these hold their peace, the rocks would cry out for me. But he goes into the temple. He finds them selling blessings. I want to stop here for just a minute. People that believe that here that is comparable to selling tapes in the back of the church or selling tapes outside the church, that is not what this means in Matthew 21. They were selling blessings. They were trying to make a profit of God's work. And they were taking advantage of the poor. And they were selling the pigeons and the, and the, and the sheep and all these things. They were, they were selling blessings for them to go in and worship God with. He went in and flip the tables over. He said, my house is to be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. But he comes on down, and it said as he was in there, the children, the babes, begin to cry out. He said, the Pharisees came to him and said, you need to quiet them down. He said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have they perfected praise. Amen. Why is it that a baby crying is perfect praise? Sure. There's no sin in that life. Amen. There's no sin in that life. You don't get any more perfect than that little baby. That's why I don't believe uh, I'm going to run a rabbit. I've been running a rabbit for weeks. I'm going to have to give me a couple dogs and go rabbit hunting. Amen. That's why I don't believe in a nursery for your church. If you get to a point in your church where you can't stand to hear a baby whimper or cry or pages ruffling in the seats of children playing, collaring, or whatever they're doing, then you've come to a point where you need help from the Lord. Amen. Because without raising a generation in the house of God that they can learn how to praise Him, learn how to uplift Him, and learn how to act and behave in the house of God, we've lost that generation. Amen. Saw a post on Facebook the other day inviting someone to revival. And it said in the post, we have child care available. We do too. Amen. If you can't handle your child, hand it to the person sitting next to you and they will help you with your child here at Reamer. Amen. If the church can't handle it, you bring them up here. In this pulpit, I guarantee you they'll behave. <laughs> we got to have them here. I pastored a church for a little while. 
Every time that a child would cry or get loud or walk around the service, somebody would go and grab it and run it down the hallway into a uh, nursery. And in fact, it was so bad. I'm, I'm still running this rabbit here for just a minute. It was so bad uh, that they were complaining that the nursery was too loud. So they moved it to the other end of the hallway uh, so they couldn't hear uh, anything that was going on. If they would have uplifted their name uh, of Jesus in praise, uh, opened their mouth uh, and began to praise him, uh, they would wouldn't have heard those children. We didn't come here to be dead, dry, and lethargic. Amen. We came to praise him. He said that his house would be a house of prayer, a house of praise, a place to uplift the name of Jesus. Amen. And we need to treat it as such that we can uplift and praise him for who he is and for what he's done in our lives. But I want to look at verse 6 real quick before we go any farther. Because every one of us were in this position in verse 6. He said, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he heard, or and he delivered them out of their distresses. Anybody ever had problems in their life? Yes. Anybody ever had to cry out unto the Lord? Anybody ever had to say, Lord, I can't take it. I can't do it. I need your help. Yes. Every one of us did. If you're saved this morning, every one of us had to cry out unto the name of the Lord because that's the only way you can get saved is to call on Jesus. Cry out unto him. Ask him for help. Ask him for deliverance. Ask him to be what's needed. In verses 1 through 8, we find that they're crying out uh, because of their distresses uh, of nothing that they did. Uh, they were taken into captivity uh, into Babylon. Uh, I know that because uh, he said gathering from the north, uh, the east, the west uh, and the south. Uh, Babylon came in uh, and took them uh, and scattered the children uh, all over. Uh, he said let's gather them back in. Uh, I don't look at it that way. Uh, I look at it as God uh, calling every kindred and nation uh, unto salvation. Uh, doesn't matter what color uh, or creed you are. Doesn't matter who you are or where you've come from. Jesus wants to save everybody. Amen. I'm thankful that he doesn't we don't put a sign on the door. Only certain ones allowed here to worship. Because God came to save everybody. But I'm thankful that he hears our cry. He said in Psalm 50 and 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee and thou shalt Glorify me. So he tells us if you'll call on him what he'll do and then what we're supposed to do again. Amen. We call on him. He sends deliverance and then we are to glorify him. So what we need in our lives is to not only be able to call upon the Lord, we spent the last three services minus last Sunday talking about prayer. And so we see, uh, thank you Lord, I never even paid attention to it till this morning. So we lead uh, prayer right up on into praise because uh, what needs to happen after we pray uh, and the answer comes uh, after we pray uh, and find uh, God did it to, to, to deliver us from something or to help us with something, uh, the very next thing that needs to happen in our life uh, is praise. So really, uh, this could just be step number four of that series of prayer. Because praise comes right with prayer. Because once, once we get that answer from Him, we've got to uplift His name. We've got to thank Him for the things that He's done in our lives. He delivered the children of Israel for one reason. He told him in, uh, he told Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. He said, I have heard the cries of my people. I have heard the cries of my people. You say this morning, you say, I, the Lord doesn't care about me. Yes, he does. 400 years they were in bondage. He told, uh, he told uh, uh, Abraham that that's what was going to happen. Uh, he, he was telling Abraham about that nation uh, that he was going to bless through Isaac. Uh, and he told him they would be in bondage uh, all these years. Uh, but he would go in and deliver uh, them out of that bondage. Uh, amen. He would, uh, he would supply what's needed. Uh, and I got to thinking about that. Why put him in bondage, Fred? I, I didn't understand it. Uh, but you don't need to know that you need a Savior uh, until you realize uh, what shape you're in. Uh, not one of us realized uh, that we needed salvation uh, until we understood and realized we were lost. That's right. 
in Romans 10, uh, we realize that that's the Romans road. Uh, and we read the Romans road as such. Uh, but until an individual realizes they need a Savior, uh, they need salvation, uh, that they're lost. Uh, so you've got to take them uh, into uh, Romans 3 uh, and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, before you can ever get to Romans chapter 10, uh, we've got to realize we needed a Savior. Amen. So we've cried unto him. Psalms 34 is one of my favorite passages of scripture when it talks about crying unto the Lord. He said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. And we jump down into verse 18. He said, the righteous cry and the Lord delivers them out of all their troubles. He said, if you'll cry unto me, you that are righteous, my people, those that are saved. He's talking to those that are saved. But here he's talking to those that are lost. Amen. Because he said, our righteousness is but filthy rags. So if he's talking about righteousness here, he's not talking about ours. He's not talking about our righteousness. He's got to be talking about His righteousness. When do we get His righteousness? When we get saved. When we get saved, it says that He clothes us in His righteousness. I like that because that tells me I had nothing to do with it. Absolutely. I couldn't even clothe myself, Fred. Yeah. I asked him for salvation. He didn't clean me up. Uh, he didn't do anything. He clothed me with his righteousness. Uh, amen. Uh, he didn't cover my sins. Uh, he washed them away. Uh, amen. Never to be remembered again. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, it's got nothing to do with us uh, and everything to do with him. Uh, and that's why we need to praise him. Amen. I thought about going into revival. There's not a message that I felt uh, was more needed this morning than to praise the Lord. Amen. You want to see things done this week. You say, well, what are some things we want to see done this week in revival? We want to see the lost saved, right? Yeah. He said, and if I, even I be lifted up, speaking of his death, right? I will draw all men unto me. But what do we do every single day of our lives? We lift him up. We lift him up. And I still believe today that if we'll lift up the name of Jesus, he'll draw our loved ones in. Uh, he'll draw all those uh, that we care about so dearly and deeply for. Uh, he'll draw them to an altar of prayer uh, under conviction uh, in their lives uh, and save them by the grace of God. Uh, but if we want to see uh, those saved this week, uh, we've got to praise the name of Jesus. Amen. But we want to see those that need help. We want to see them helped. We want to see them uplifted. We want to see them strengthened. That all comes from praise and uplifting the name of Jesus. He said in Psalms 22 and verse 3 that God inhabits the praises of his people. Ultimately, what we want the most this week is for God to be here. Yeah. We just want him to be here. We want, him, we want to just bask in His presence and, and, and be here under the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and see uh, the Spirit fall and people helped and people strengthened uh, and lives changed. Uh, that's what we want. Uh, but there are some things that we need to praise Him for uh, before we can get to that point. First off, we've got to praise Him for our salvation. It's an individual thing. Oh, your walk with the Lord is an individual thing. Which means your praise unto the Lord has to be an individual thing thing. David said this in Psalms 40. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my, here's that word again, cry. He brought me up out of the mire clay and set my feet upon the solid rock and established my goings. Amen. He put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto my lips. Hey, I'm telling you this morning. Hey, only you know where God brought you from. Only knew you know what God brought you through. Only you know the situation that you were in before you met the Lord. And because of that, only you can praise him for your salvation. It's got to be an individual thing. We've each got to take it upon ourselves to praise Him for the things He's done in our lives. Beverly, I can want to praise Him all I want to for healing you of cancer, but that was your need. Amen. That's your praise to give Him. That's your praise to offer up to Him. I thought about Sarah and, and Braley, and I love, I love that she's talking. I mean, I, it tickles me, absolutely tickles me to death. Uh, and, and, but I thought, that's your praise to give the Lord for that baby talking. But let's back up. 
That's your praise to give the Lord that she's even here. Amen. Amen. We each individually have things that we can praise Him for because of answered prayers in our individual life. Things He's done for us that nobody can stand up in church and praise the Lord for our needs, but we can stand up and praise Him for the things that He's done in our lives ourselves. Amen. He said this in 2 Samuel. We know that, that uh, Samuel went and anointed David as king. He did that early in 1 Samuel. And David spends all the rest of 1 Samuel pretty much running from Saul. So he comes in into 2 Samuel. And David is talking here to the Lord. And God comes and visits with Nathan and gives him a word to give unto David in, in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7. And he's talking about the children of Israel and they were wanderers before uh, David as king. They were wanderers uh, and they never had a place and, and David had prayed that God would give them a place uh, to worship him, to praise him. And we know that, that David's the one that gathered everything that Solomon needed uh, to build the temple. Uh, David gathered all those things, uh, but God wouldn't let David build the temple uh, because David was a man of war uh, and he didn't want somebody that was of war uh, to build the temple. So he had Solomon, David's son, uh, build the temple. We know that Solomon had knowledge and wisdom far above his father David. That's what he asked for. He asked for that, uh, that wisdom, that understanding, and that knowledge. But here we find uh, that God has to remind David where he came from. Every now and then we got to be reminded where we came from. He said, his old Nathan, he said, you go tell David, I'm the one that brought him out of the sheep coat and put him in the palace. See, David didn't have any lineage that should have put him in the kingdom. He shouldn't have been into the palace. But God doesn't work in our rules. He doesn't work our way. In fact, if we look at David, he wasn't even the one physically that they should have anointed as king. Yeah. They said he was ruddy. He was just an old shepherd. They looked at all of David's brothers. He said, do you not, Samuel said, do you not have, is there not one more? None of these are it. Yeah. I can see old David's dad saying, well, old David's out there. He's all we got. You know how many people look at their testimony, their song, their praise? Well, it's all we got. When I think about that, I immediately think about uh, going to Jeremiah 38, when Jeremiah's in the pit. And it said that old Abedmelech went to the king on behalf of Jeremiah. He was a eunuch, went to the king and said, if you leave Jeremiah in that pit, he's going to die there. There's no water, there's no food. If you leave him in there, he's going to die. He told Abedmelech, he said, you go get him. Get you 30 men, you go get him. All they had was old rotten rags and clout. Old rotten pieces of rope, that's all they had. And people so often look at their testimony that way, at their song that way. Just an old rotten testimony. Just an old rotten song. Uh, amen. Uh, if that's what you've got to offer up to the Lord, uh, you use that to reach down uh, and pull somebody out of that pit. Uh, you reach down. Uh, use that to reach down uh, and save somebody out of that situation that they're in. Uh, hey, little is much uh, when God is in it. Uh, amen. Don't look at your praise uh, as not as good as somebody else's uh, because it's not as loud, uh, not as bolstered or bold. Uh, amen. You just offer up uh, your praise in the Lord. Because only you know where he brought you from. Amen. So we need to praise him for the salvation that we have. But when he saved us, that wasn't all that he did. Toby was preaching last night, and, and, I, and I, I've thought about this often. But you know, God didn't just save us and stop there. When I asked him for salvation, all I was asking him for was to get to go to heaven. That's all I asked him for. For salvation. That's all I asked him for. I, just, I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. But he's given me exceedingly abundantly above all that I asked for. I had no idea when I got saved what God was about to do in my life. I had no idea the blessings, the helps, the strength, all the things that he did in my life. I had no idea that's what he was going to do. All I asked for was for salvation, was to get to go to heaven. But daily he loaded us with benefits. He helps us and he supplies. And I'm thankful that God knows what we need. 
But have you ever thought about if you didn't ask him for it? Would he have just passed you on by? What we find here in Mark chapter 4, we find that the disciples are in the ship. Jesus has told them to go on to the other side, and he stays back to pray. And it says all about the fourth watch. Uh, Jesus looks out onto the sea and sees the wind tossing the boat. And he sees the disciples out there toiling uh, and rowing uh, in that storm. And Jesus goes uh, and begins walking on the water toward them. And it said when they saw him, they perceived that he was a ghost. But it says that when Jesus saw him, it was as if he would have passed them by. As if they didn't call out to him, Jesus would have walked on. Sure he would. Yeah. That's what the Bible says in Mark chapter 4 verse 46. It said that Jesus saw them and would have passed by, but they did something. They cried out yeah. unto him. You realize that when we come to church, that God has everything that we could ever need in our lives. But do you allow him to pass you by? Or do you cry out to him? See, we miss that, that great opportunity to be healed, to be helped, to be strengthened, to, to have all these things done when we allow him to walk right on by when he's moving. Many times in this church, I've seen the waters troubled and I've seen people come. Bless you, Tony. I've seen people come and get the help that they needed. And I have been in conversation the same day or maybe that week with somebody else in the church that was in need. And I've seen the water troubled and I've seen others come and I've seen that individual just sit in their seat uh, afraid to come and pray or, or whatever the need might be uh, but not move while the help was here, uh, while the answer was there uh, and continue to toil in their storm and struggle, struggle in their need uh, and let the wind blow them uh, all over the place uh, when the help that they needed uh, was passing them by. Uh, I'm telling you this morning uh, all you've got to do uh, is call upon the name of the Lord uh, ask him for help. Uh, he'll be what's needed. Uh, his ears inclined to us uh, but we've got to cry out to him. Amen. They begin to praise him like they did when he was in the boat and they were caught in the storm. The Bible says here that as soon as Jesus was on board the storm stopped. I would love for that to be the case in my life. But we read in, that was in Mark chapter 4, we read in, I believe it's in Matthew chapter 15 if I'm not mistaken. We read of a different storm. And Jesus was in the boat in that storm, but the boat was still rocking. The water was still being taken on. They had to cry out to him there too. But you know what? This morning, he's in my boat. Amen. But that doesn't mean the storms stop all the time. Amen. That doesn't mean they just cease immediately. But I do have one that I can cry out to. I do have one that I can call upon. I do have one that's there to help me in that need. I do have one that can supply my need according to his riches Amen. in glory. He's got an abundant supply. He can do all things. And so often we allow him to walk right on by us. Yeah. Instead of calling out to him and asking him for the help that we need. When they got the help that they needed, you know what they did? They praised him. Amen. We've got to get into a habit of when we pray and God answers, we praise. Amen. Immediate. There are times I've knelt at an altar, and, and, I, and I can't say that I do this with everybody. I want to be able to. But I know their walk. I know who they are. And I've prayed, God, you know the need here. And you know, if you answer this need, they are going to praise you. You know that if you answer this prayer in their life, they're going to uplift your name. It's going to help somebody else. They're going to make it known. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. If you'll just touch, I know you'll receive the praise. Amen. But so often I can't pray that with everybody. But we need to be that person. We need to be that person. That when God answers, it's immediate. It's immediate. We praise Him. We praise Him. So we know what He's done in our lives. 
And now we get to the point of the message, or the part of the message I, I really want to focus on this week. This week. We've praised Him for our salvation. we praise Him for the things that we've already seen and He's already done. But you know, sometimes we've got to praise Him for what He's going to do. We've got to uplift Him for the helps that we know is about to come. Uh, the things that we know are about to happen. Uh, we've got to praise Him because He's faithful to us. Uh, and we know what He's able to do. Uh, and if we'll just uplift His name, uh, you've got to praise Him for that child uh, that may not be here yet. Uh, that you know He's going to touch. Uh, you know He's going to help. Uh, because He's faithful. Uh, and His arm is not shortened. Uh, that it can't save. Uh, I'm telling you this morning, uh, it's tough sometimes uh, to praise Him in the storm. Uh, but if we We'll lift up his name. I'm telling you this morning, God will provide. Amen. I look in Joshua chapter 6. We see the children of Israel, and they're going to that battle of Jericho, that great walled city of Jericho. They're, uh, uh, I don't know exactly the words to say, but from a warfare standpoint, there was no way the children of Israel should have been able to take that city in their selves. They weren't equipped with the equipment they needed to tear that wall down. They didn't march out of Egypt with all kinds of uh, uh, things of war. They were in bondage. They spent all that time in the wilderness. Maybe they was out there building uh, uh, spears and, and bows and all that stuff, but I don't think so. And they go to this city and God gives them a divine plan. And we would have looked at the Lord and said, what? That's your plan? You just want us to march around. Don't shoot nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't protect ourselves. Just march. Yep. So for six days, one time a day, they marched around. And I thought about that. And I thought, here we have come to revival. And we've been marching. And we've been marching. And we've been doing what the God has told us to do. And we've been doing what God has told us to do. And we've been following after His will. And doing exactly, word for word, what He wanted us to do. And we march around, silent. And we march around, silent. Then on the seventh day, He didn't tell them on the first time to praise Him. On the seventh day, He said, I want you to march around six times. Now this was a great city. I, I don't we can't fully understand or comprehend this because of how big this city would have been and how many people would have been marching around it. Uh, we said before that when the children of Israel came across uh, uh, the Red Sea, uh, uh, there was about a million and a million and a half people with them. Uh, now we realize too uh, that a lot of those died in the wilderness because of their unbelief and they wouldn't follow after God. Uh, but there's still a great number of people uh, that are marching around this city. Uh, it would have taken them. A a great amount of time to march six times around that city. And I wonder, this is just Austin for a minute. I'm out of the book for just a second. If there's anything you want to argue with me about on the message, this is your section right here. I wonder if there weren't a few in there that begin to murmur and complain because it was taking too much time. I realize I, I preach about 35 to 40, 50 minutes every time I preach. Wayne is a 25 to 35 minute preacher. So if this week you uh, get hung up on how long the preacher preaches, this is your week. Uh, he's a 25 to 35 minute preacher. Uh, he's get in, you uh, get out and get moving kind of guy. Hey man, uh, I'm a little more long winded than he is. Uh, but I wonder if as they marched, if there weren't a few that thought, there's a lot better things we could be doing right now than marching around this city. What's he say to do? He said, do all things without murmuring, disputing. But I, I mean, human nature, right, Daniel? Human nature. I wonder if some of them got out of line. I don't know this. Again, that's sitting in the book. But I look at the children of Israel like I look at us. They murmured and complained from the time they left Egypt. I don't know why they wouldn't have murmured and complained walking around this city. But the majority of them, because you can't please everybody. So the majority of them, they kept marching, Fred. They had to have, or the wall wouldn't have came down. But on that seventh day, yeah, seventh day 
at the seventh time they marched around it. He told them, when you hear the trumpets, when you hear the trumpets begin to blow, I want you to shout with a great shout. We're there. The work has been put in. You've prayed. You've handed out flyers. You've invited people to church. You've been on your knees asking people to come. You've gone. You've done the work. Now it's time to sit back and praise the Lord and allow Him to do the rest. I watched last night. I'm telling you, I had to, it was anger that came over me in the house of God. There was a young man that was there about to come out of his seat, getting ready to come to the altar. I could see it on his face. And somebody went and began nagging on him and he walked out the back door. God was working. God was working. He cried the whole service. Cried the whole time. Don't be that person. All the work has been put in. Somebody's prayed for that person. Somebody's gone to that door. Somebody's handed out that flyer. Somebody sent that message. Somebody took their time, got on their knees, and prayed conviction on that person and asked them to come to the house of God. And then God began to work, and the wall was about to come down. Mm. Yeah. It's something I feel very passionately about. We're there. You're at the wall. Do you know what God wants us to do? Praise Him. Amen. Praise Him. Uplift Him. You say, I just don't know what I can do in this revival this week. There's two things you can do. Show up and praise Him. Show up and praise Him. You do those two things, you'll be helped in your life and you'll see other people in this church helped. Uh, you'll be helped in your life uh, and everybody on your row might be helped. Uh, it may be your neighbor that walks through the door. Uh, it may be your loved one that walks through the door. Uh, you'll be here uh, and you begin to praise uh, and that's the help that you can give. So often we put too much thought into it. Thank you, Lord. I'll go there. We put too much thought into it. What can I do this week at Revival? It's simple. Show up and praise Him. Don't need nothing great. Don't need, don't need anything extra. We need to show up with praise under our lips and uplift Him. Preacher's coming with a message. Singer's coming with songs. Amen. It's covered. Fred's going to handle the, 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 the congregationals and the altar calls or whatever else. It's covered. We just need you to show up and uplift his name and praise him and support and be like those geese. Remember those geese I preached about? We talked about that head goose was out in front and the other goose, the geeses, goose's geese, and the other geese, the whole way south. What are they doing? Ah, ah. They're just cheering him on, praising him on, helping him, amen, mucking him up. We're here, we're behind you, we're with you. Just praise him. Just praise him. Let your pastor know you're here. Amen. Let the evangelist know you're behind him. Man, driving a long way this week. Let him know you're behind him. Let him know you're supportive. If he says something you don't like, say amen anyway. It helps us. It does. Because normally when you hit those points, you don't want to say them, but God has given it. God has given it. He gave me this, and I'll be finished, okay? He gave me the word praise, and he put it into an acronym. If you want to praise this week, six things you got to do. P, you got to be prepared. You've got to come to the house of the Lord prepared. We've got to come in ready to praise Him. He said this, If there will be any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one Mind. Uh, if we can do anything this week to come into praise, we've got to be prepared. We've got to be prepared when we get to the house of God. We look at the word or the letter R, reverence. I could preach a whole message right here, right now. 
This is God's house. We need to, we need to treat it as such. With reverence and godly fear. God's house. That we treat it with the respect that it deserves. We come into his house. The only way you can properly praise him is to respect and fear him the way that we need to. We know that fear is the beginning of wisdom. Fear the Lord. That's that respect he's talking about. It's not fear in a fearful way, but fear in a respectful way. He said, Wherefore, seeing we have a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. A, be attentive. Pay attention. Be attentive in the house of God. Pay attention to what's going on. You that are prayers, and we have got the, I, I say we've got the best group of prayers here. Somebody comes to the altar, man, people just flock. Do that. Pay attention. When you see somebody coming, flock in there. Love on them. Help them. Uplift them. Pray them through. Be that support system. Be that hug. Be that help. Be that holy kiss. Amen. Be what's needed for that individual that's come. We do that wonderfully here. Don't let revival, don't let the fear of revival, the word revival, stop you from just having church. Stop you from wanting to just come in and pray with somebody or shake a hand when somebody testifies. Pay attention and be attentive in the house of God to what is going on. Be interactive. Goes right along with attentive. God has given all of us a work to do. Amen. What is that work? Praise. Praise. Bring your hankies. Man, I used to love that when I was a kid. Side note. I used to love that when I was a kid. Grandmas and grandpas with them hankies, man. Just. I looked at that. What? In a battle. Back in the old days, before they, they sent out all this stuff, when they would stand about from me to Connie away from each other and fight, when one side was going to give up, what'd they do? They would wave the... You ever think about them hankies? You know what you're saying when you're saying to God? You can have it all. I give up. I surrender all. It's all about you. I can't do nothing on my own. You can have me. I'm all yours. I surrender. You can have it, Lord. Bring your hankies. Wave them for Jesus. Let him know it's all about him. The S, be submissive. Be submissive to the will of God. Be submissive. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Be submissive to the will of God. And the last one, and I feel like is my favorite. E, be energetic. Be energetic. If we don't show the world something better than what they've got, they won't want anything of what we've got. Amen. If we don't give them, if we don't show them the, the joy unspeakable and full of glory, if we don't show them how great God is and what He's really done, we sing that song, Bev. Uh, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, I can only sing that because He's the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, but I don't want to just sing it. I, I want to live it. I, I want people to see uh, that He's that best thing. I, I want them to know that He's that best thing. Uh, and the only way that I can do that uh, is to give Him praise, uh, honor, and glory uh, that He deserves uh, and uplift Him. His name. Amen. As Fred comes to get us a song, as Debbie comes, I'm going to ask you this morning, if you've got someone on your heart, someone on your mind right now that you've been praying for, for this revival, for them to come, come and pray for them. If you've got things in your life you're struggling with, maybe you think, you know, my level of praise isn't quite what it should be. Come and pray about it. You think this morning, well, you know, I've had answered prayers in my life and I've not praised God the way that I should. Come and pray about it. Amen. Use this altar, not just this morning, uh, not just tonight, uh, but all down throughout this week. Use this altar of prayer. Uh, amen. It's for our benefit that we do that as we stand this morning to get a song. The 57.